four years ago today, I had my very last cigarette. I have not had any cravings since I quit, and it has been very easy. Now, I'm going to explain the whole history of smoking from my very first time I even touched a cigarette to now. So, my grandmother, my mother's mother, was a smoker, but she quit while I was in my mother's womb. Yet, I'm the youngest of her grandkids, so I kind of feel special that she quit for me and not the others. I know that's selfish, but whatever. So, that was my history of smoking. Also, as a child, also, no one in my family smoked, other than an uncle who lived in California that I rarely saw. And I honestly used to get headaches from cigarette smoke. And in high school, I was very judgmental of smokers. With that said, the first time I ever s touched a cigarette, I was at my mother's mother's house. I was in the attic, and I found a pack of cigarettes. I think it was already opened, but I'm not sure. Later, after telling that again, I realized that my mother's mother was probably in the attic smoking a cigarette, and that's why they were there. But I found them, and I pretended to, like, smoke them in front of my grandmother, walking down the stairs where she was, and she freaked out, and all that stuff. I don't know why we didn't dispose of them, but somehow I smuggled them to a playground nearby that no one was on. And remember, I'm probably like 12 years old. And so I'm smoking this, this probably 15-year-old Virginia Slim cigarette, non-menthol. And I smoke it and I start coughing erratically. And I didn't smoke for a while after that. That was my only time. Later, several years later, my grandmother passes away and I go to college. Uh, I, through mourning her, so this would have been, she died in 2004 and I went to college in 2007. So it wasn't that far away. And I just remember, even though she wasn't a smoker when I knew her, I just remember looking at her old pictures. And when she was my age at the time, she always had a cigarette in her hand. So my first cigarette that I started smoking was a Camel Crush, uh, and then that evolved into a Virginia Slim uh, Menthol. I experimented with other cigarettes, like there were these really, really thin, small cigarettes that I tried. Uh, and then the next one was Marlboro Menthol Light with Marlboro Smooth. Sometimes I couldn't smoke a whole pack in one, but like I'd sometimes smoke a marble menthol smooth like a dessert cigarette it tastes like peppermint patties and then i went to american spirit and that was american spirit menthol light the lime green pack and that was my last brand of cigarettes and basically i tried to quit i smoked for 10 years i tried to quit on chantex twice both times i had a bad reaction, either probably emotionally. I don't remember exactly what happened. I just remember I didn't feel stable. And then finally, the third time comes around, I take my first Chantex pill, February 1st, the night of February 1st, 2019. And uh, that night, I had a very vivid dream of my grandmother coming to pick me up in a car like she used to do it when she picked me up from school and we had a connection and that dream for me I believe was her attaching to my conscience and just solidifying that this is going to be my final time because as I said I started smoking kind of to connect with her to be like her so I had that dream and then between February 1st and Feb oh, no, January 1st and February 8th, it just became easier and easier to not smoke. And I naturally, without even trying, like I never, I never starved myself of a cigarette. I would smoke when I wanted to. And then all of a sudden, 
uh, February 8th, right before I clocked in at a client's house, uh, I smoked my last cigarette. And for me, the reason why I say Chantex and the Rosary did it was because even though I didn't really have cravings, I kept myself preoccupied by praying the rosary when I wanted to smoke, if I wanted to smoke, um, by holding them in my hand, so there's one, and then also praying them verbally is the whole breath aspect, so that really encompasses the whole smoking, whatever, and I haven't had a cigarette since. I have actually, when I knew for sure I was done smoking, uh, probably in April of 2019, I had, uh, I'll just say a mental breakdown, basically. What it felt like was, if you used to watch like a Karen video of them just being outrageous and unhinged in public, like take that energy and internalize it to, to internal screaming and like, ter not terror, but like, I was very, I was not in a comfortable place mentally. I was in a lot of anguish and i do relate that directly to the lack of nicotine uh but i just remember being at a friend's house uh i was all in my head and i started crying quietly because i don't really cry loudly and he notices me and he tries to comfort me and he says travis if you're really having that hard of a time you should just smoke and quit later so he actually had i don't know why this happened but he had uh my brand of cigarettes, the American Menthol Light, the Lime Green Pack, and I actually pick up a cigarette, pick up a lighter, and I'm like looking at it in my hand, and I very easily was able to put it down and move on. Uh, so at that point, if I knew I could reject cigarettes in a mental crisis, then I could reject them in general. Another fear of mine before I quit smoking was after I, I thought after I quit smoking, it would be hard for years and years because every time I woke up, I'd want a cigarette and every time I ate, I'd want a cigarette and every time I blah, 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 whatever, there was always a trigger. And I always thought that would haunt me for years afterwards. And it didn't. I could drive. Driving was a trigger. Waking up was a trigger. Eating was a trigger. And after I quit, none of that affected me. And I also thought I'd have, like, dreams of wanting to smoke cigarettes, so when I woke up, I'd want them even more. That only happened once, probably two years after, and uh, I didn't have a craving after I woke up. It was really weird. In the dream, I, remember that I, I remembered that I quit smoking, but I smoked anyways, so it was really cool that even though it was just a dream, I still had the wherewithal to know that I had really quit smoking in real life. So the moral of the story is everyone has their own journey, but for me, quitting smoking the final time was a lot easier than I ever thought or and that it ever had been in the past. So with that said, I am blessed and grateful to no longer be addicted to nicotine and being able to like do things like I can go on a long road trip without smoking a cigarette. I can fly an airplane without having withdrawals. There's just so much freedom without having to carry around a lighter and a pack of cigarettes all day long. And, like, I remember when I was a smoker, if I forgot my cigarettes at home, which was rare, I'd have to turn around and go back and get them no matter what. And that was slavery, to nicotine at least. So, again, I'm just really blessed and grateful that um, I was able to quit, and I'm really glad that I'm able to look back four years later and know that I still have not consumed any nicotine since then.